Welcome to Holiday Love Rats Exposed. Thanks to A True Story for covering these episodes. Yes, the majority of the women interviewed are two bobs. However, the scenario is still the same. Greetings, greetings. Welcome back to another town hall talk discussion on Travel with Tay Tay. Y'all know I'm Travel with Tay Tay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I am going to immediately bring my co host in the beautiful Mott on the Mat, also known as Miss L. If y'all are in the Gambia and y'all have not taken her water class, shame on you. Tay Tay going to beat you when she sees you, okay? <laughs> How are you, sister? Good evening. Good evening. I am fine. Thank you. How are you? I am well. Thank you so much for joining. I know it is nine o'clock there. Um, so we're just going to get, we're going to get it started. Thank you to everyone who will be joining us this evening. Thank you to everyone who will be watching the replay. I hope you enjoyed the intro. We're going to get into a lot of different things tonight. And first thing I want to say is we're going to do a lot of disclaimers throughout this video, right? Miss L. Yes. And if my mic goes off, just let me know, y'all. Y'all know my mics be disrespectful. But <laughs> um, we're going to do a lot of disclaimers. We will be saying a lot of disclaimers this evening. And we just want to start off by saying we, everything that we're saying, we're saying with love, right? We would rather you all and all of us be prepared than not prepared. So, we really don't care about your personal life. We just want to give you tools to make sure that you're safe and that the, the, the pattern that we're seeing does not continue to happen in the Gambia or in any other country in Africa. All right. Sister Anja, I'm just going to say Sister Anja Africa, she warned us. If y'all didn't see the video that I just dropped an hour before this, she warned us. Did she not? Yeah. So I will be opening the platform. I will be opening my platform for the first time to the general public. And um, I just ask that everyone please come with respect. Please don't come with any disrespect because y'all know the ancestors, Jesus and the prophet Muhammad, is st they're still working on me. Right. So um, I can't say that my snapback won't come for you. So let's just not even go that down that road and just we just give each other respect if you come on here. So let's just show each other respect so we don't have to go down that road. Um, we did have a few speakers that on the schedule, but because of the, what is it? The OIC? Yes, it, that is the OIC. And I'm not quite sure what the acronym stands for. I have not looked it up. The funny thing is OIC is the name of the highway. Am I right? Isn't Bertel Harding Highway also the OIC Highway? So I the OIC oh, wow. conference, I don't know. That that was a discussion that I had with someone. I didn't take the time out to Google it, but there is a conference taking place this weekend. Today and tomorrow, there are um, dignitaries here from other countries. And so the conference that they're at is located in the Senegambia area. And so they, we, we are sharing, they, they are, we are sharing our power with them so that um, they are comfortable in the space. That's what I thought, because we do know that they, they can roll that electricity into different locations, which is so funny, right? So when we That's say right. that in America, we're like, wait, if they're doing it in a third world country, I know it can be done here. They've done um, it. They've done it in the United States. They have. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I did ask a Gambian. Um, I did ask a Gambian, would they share with me what the conference was? And um, he said, this is Pato Mafula, Pato Jalo. If y'all know Jalo, Jalo is Fula. If you hear Jalo surname, that's a Fula. Um, the organization of Islamic corporation, um, 
It says, formerly the Organization of the Islamic Conference. So I guess it has to do with Islam. The organization states that this is the collective voice of the Muslim world and works to safeguard and protect the interests of Muslims in the world in the spirit of promoting international peace and harmony, which is, you know, it's a great thing. It's just, I, for me, the Gambia and many countries in Africa are already taken care of when it comes to the organized religion side. So that's why I try to focus on other things because we need to be balanced. I'm, that's just my opinion. We need to be balanced. I can't just have all religion and no education because then people can control me. Hmm. Right. But that's well, just my that's opinion. No, I, I agree. And it, it's not with just Islam. It's with Christianity or any other type of um, organized religion. Sorry, family. Don't get sensitive about it. But I'm an adult. I've given it some thought. I prefer the spirituality of it. I do understand I take some of that with me, which allows me to be more human and um, open to accept everyone as they are. And so that brings me back to our conversation because there are people here that I socialize with in the Gambia, people that I see on a regular basis in the Gambia. I do not want anyone to feel it hurtful or feel as if I am talking toward their situation, because that is not the case. And the reality is that we do have to talk about a disclaimer, and that happens on almost any YouTube channel when we're discussing relationships and men with women or religion. It always says this, not all. So we are not talking about all. If you're one of those that got a not all, not him, not us, I am so happy for you. I have been honored to see people and wonderful, strong, and safe and loving relationships. That makes me very excited. Unfortunately, the record shows, based on the documentation that you shared, that for a large majority, that is not the case. And that's what this topic is about. Also, let me, let's talk also. It's not about what they're doing. It's about how we're going to move in order to be safe when we come here because the women are still coming. Nothing so that's just, happened, nothing bad that's happening is stopping the women from coming. So I, I and we're grateful for that, right? Right. And 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 thank you for saying that because we're not talking about everyone. Every man and every woman in the Gambia or abroad or in America is not a bumpster or a bumette. If you're a certain age, then we know, I don't want no scrubs. We used to call them scrubs, right? So right. in the Gambia, they're bumpsters and bumettes. Let me just greet. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. Smiley Coast, Wendy Green, thank you so much for hopping in, you all. Please remember to hit that like, um, that like button, share this, and consider um, joining and subscribing to Miss L's channel. But um, you're right. You're right. So let me say, is it okay to have this conversation? You know, some may be triggered by some statements, but like I said before, I will say it's all coming from a place of love. It's all coming from a place of love. I'm sorry, Miss L, I cut you off. No, you did not. Um, what what you're saying is what what I was saying. And um, I, so I will tell you, you and I know that this conversation is long coming. It, 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 it's something that I think, I know me in my heart, I have been trying to avoid it. I did not want to talk about it. It wasn't my place to do so. It is a very sensitive topic. 
whether it is in Africa or in America, you know, certain things we do, we, you know, whatever happens in the home stays at home and the, the, the um, mm -hmm. images that we share on our social media platforms show us just happy, peppy and bursting with love. And what's happening behind doors may be very different. Yeah. Um, the problem is, I think that we've reached a point where it's no longer our decision to say we don't want to talk about it. Not to get too spiritual, the ancestors, they're saying, look, those that have gone before us, those that have passed away here, they're saying it's time to be talked about. Now, with that being said, I'm not necessarily saying that those that passed away that I recently um, know of died from the hands of, a, of, of someone that they were in relationship with. I am not saying that. But what I'm saying is, as a single female in the Gambia, I am naturally concerned, but also on my P's and Q's about how to navigate in the country. And I think that it is important for me to share that with as many people that will listen. Correct, correct. Um, because we are, we're on, we use our channel, we're on here, we're saying, come to Africa, right? And like I, I've been preaching from the time I got on this channel, Travel with Tay Tay, that I cannot sit here and just give you the good and not mm -hmm. the bad. I, we can't set you up for failure. And like you said, women, people are still coming, when, men and women. But like I'm going to say in my notes, I've never been a man. I've told y'all this before. I have never been a man. No trans anything over here. No disrespect. However... I can't speak for the men, right? So we're, we will be talking to you all from our woman's vantage point, right? And, and I will be speaking from my specific vantage point um, or my point of view from me being a victim. If anything, look at the people that have been through something and say, I ain't going to go down that road. You know, use my life as an example. I'm not happy that the that past four years of my life is on YouTube. A absolutely not. But if it will help someone, then so be it. Then so be it. Because I could have ended up unalive. If the people that allegedly robbed me was trying to come back that night to do what? You took almost everything. You, and they're coming back with a friend. So we don't really, me, I'm going to say me. I don't really think about the uh, unaliveness, unaliveness that we see in America there. Mm -hmm. But now, like Miss L said, it, it's time to have this conversation. So many of us have been having this conversation behind the scenes. Over and over and over, we've been having this conversation behind the scenes. And we're like, we're going to have you know, a town hall talk. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to have a panel because we need to let people know what's going on. So like you said, the ancestors have pushed us and it's like, all right, let's get this done. We didn't want anything bad to happen to anyone. And like Miss L said, we don't know. We know the people that were unalive by force. We know mm -hmm. that. Right. Right. But any other ones, and we know the doctor that passed away on their own terms, right? Those are the two that I know that, okay, there's there are no questions, ifs, ands, or buts about what has happened to this person. But the rest of the people that passed away, there aren't any autopsies, autopsy. We don't know. We don't, but we can listen to what they were saying and we could look at what's happening and say, hey, look, we need to move this way. All right. So you want to, we want to start going into the questions, Miss L? Oh, uh, sure. Let's go into the questions. Okay. So we'd like to pose some questions to the platform. I did put the StreamYard app in here, you all. 
it is let me post it it is in here if anyone wants to come on you want to you will be in the green room and we'll let you in we will be asking you who you are just to eliminate any nonsense y'all right this is for the community we just don't want any nonsense so um, you can come on if you don't want your face to be shown. We could just hear your voice. It's fine. It's fine. So let's pose. We're going to pose some questions and, and we're going to get into this. We have notes, but we're we're just going to wing it, right? Because we want to be as authentic as possible, right? I know, Ms. L, we, we New Yorkers, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so the first question is, when you meet a person, are you meeting them? or their representative, mm -hmm. right? I had a conversation with a friend today and that's what they were saying. And then when I looked at Sister Anja's video, that's the first thing she said. Are you meeting them or their representative? Because we know when we first meet someone, it's like, if it's a friend, whatever, you can see my crazy side, la la la, you don't care. But if it's romantic, oh, I'm gonna show you my best. I'm not going to show you that I don't do anything with my, I'm not going to show you that, right? Because that's going to make you run away. Um, Just hop in when you want, Miss L. Okay. Just hop in when okay. you want. So um, um, I do have a question. I have, I have a comment about the representative. Let's look at the um, video that you showed before we came on. Okay. Two of the women said that there was some doubt. And yet they decided to ignore it because what? Um, one of them said that she was getting older. I'm getting older. So I guess that meant she wanted, she enjoyed the attention. And the idea that somebody could have um, a loving feeling toward them. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Some people may find this topic a little bit uncomfortable. Um, there could have been a fetish. There could have been. You, look, we, <laughs> I, I, I feel you. You saw my eyes. It's just that that didn't even come to my mind. But you are right. talking. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this from the viewpoint of this this woman. The two people that were showcased were, you know, non melanated people, and they're coming here thinking, I'm going to get this fetishization on. I'm going to get this African. Ding, 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 a ling, choo, choo, all of that. And they're calling it love. Correct. And then I'm older. Also, she said, I can improve his life. Once you say that, it's a transaction. You first thought this could not be real. Maybe he wants something from me. But I can improve his life means I'm going to get something from him and he's going to get something from me. And then when the reality be begins to become more um, obvious, when your money is gone, because she's talking about how she paid out for the visa and the this. Everything. That's what she said. That man getting him over and 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 then moving him him in and and there was one episode where a woman said I realized when he met me when I met him at the airport he came with nothing no suitcase or did you see that one she was like, Dude, he expected me to purchase on him a whole new wardrobe yes and so what happens. These are adult women. You didn't think that further ahead of what this actually looks like. And please, this happens everywhere in America, in Jamaica, yeah. other places where yeah. older women who are more established, they could be retired, they have funds coming in on a regular basis, are attached to younger men. And there is a, what did she say? There, there was a come up. He talked about having that wedding certificate. It was the prize. She said it was like his holy grail. 
That's he, what it was. he was uh, celebrating with his friends. He wasn't celebrating with her. That's right. But that's something that you said. I can make his life better. I can improve his life. That is one thing that I think African Americans, we, it's just built in us. We, we always want to help. And sometimes we should. Right. And it's not saying not being mean, but the reality is if we already come traveling to the continent, we are African-Americans. They like, yo, we see them on TV. Now we, they here. Oh my God. Hey, d- d- am I lying? Everybody want to be your friend. It's African-American. Like we straight up celebrities. Right. That's right. Now with that being said, they already think we have money. Now we like, oh, here you go. Oh, sister, I need this. Oh, here you go. So we're creating this culture that we really shouldn't create. We already have a target on our back and then we want to help. So the question, you know, one of the questions I have, should we help? Because I don't give grown men money. You hear me say this all the time. People giving these grown men, 20 some odd years old, an allowance. Come on, man. we We give allowance to children. The hell okay. we giving allowances to grown men? That's right. How is that gonna make now? Why would he work? Oh, oh, he'll work, he'll do a little bit. He knows that that money is coming in. Why would he do anything? So that's the interesting part because I think that for black women in the relationship with an African man or someone who they meet here in the Gambia, it's really about black love. Because most black women who are here from America wasn't given no dude, no money on the street. If look, if you open the city bank door for me, and then when I came out, and then he said, Can you help a brother out? The answer is gonna be sorry, sir. I don't have it to give. I don't care if I just, they just saw me withdraw money from the ATM. I don't have it to give to you. Now, when I was younger, that was the thing that they would do. You know how the bank would be closed on the weekends or at night, you put your ATM in and the door buzzes. Okay, so once I put my card in and the door buzzes, it don't take much for me to open the door myself. So for homie to be like, oh, I got that for you, boo, you know, you just like. Like the people at the airport, they ain't moved not one luggage. They're like, hey, I, I want some. No. no. That's that's right. So we are not really attracted to men like that. I don't want to treat a man like he's my son. We've Correct. already raised our children. If you're in your 50s and 60s, you have already raised your children. If you had boys, you already raised your sons. So you're not going to come here and feel like this this is okay to, you know, to, to do that again. But I, for me, I think it's the desire for Black love. It's normal for a black woman and a black man to be together. And so if I'm coming here to the continent, he's just an extension. And then, you know, just I'm just being real. I feel like the social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, they have made Hooking up with African men like the, you know, they make it so easy. Uh, hi, and they just hit you with the hi. Don't hit, don't answer the hi, y'all. Do I not know, but answer like, the hi. Okay, they're just I want, I want a Nigerian wedding. If I, if you, if you watch Nollywood, they be getting down with these Nigerian weddings. The makeup is on fleek. The hair they is put on. They money on you in the gap. The money that. going to the music, right you know? Oh, does it? I don't know why everybody want to be an athlete. They need to be a musician. They don't want to be making all the money. No, could could you see me being like, need that money alone? That's mine. I didn't know that was for that musician. No, 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 no. That is my money. I'm the bride. They threw that at me. Okay. Yeah. But 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 seriously, those are the the um see, 
This sister here says she's guilty. I love blessing people. And there's nothing wrong with blessing people. And we want to continue blessing people. Here's the problem. The minute you do that, they start to think that you're in a relationship. So you got to be mindful of who you bless. Now, mm -hmm. the priceless one, welcome. Um, it's always a pleasure to see your name on here. Um, I only bless children and the disabled. Right. Okay. If I see the crazy thing is, is it's not a bunch of women. Do you find that a bunch of women walk up to you, Miss L, and say, hey, can I have some money? Or did... I, I don't find that. No. I find the mothers with the children sitting out in front of the ATM and I right. come out. They're like, oh, I'm like, sorry, sister. You know, if I have coins, I will give coins to the children. But I'm like, look, this may sound harsh as hell, y'all. I'm sorry. But what I never understood when I went to Namibia the first time and I was at the SOS Children's Village, Andangwa, and we went, there was a community development and we went out into the village, right? Where you see the bottle store is it, a, a, a bar, but they don't have any water, running water. And it's the, it's the sheds, it's the tent shed, it's not the homes homes, right? So you know that they are financially deprived, right? Now. The woman pregnant. They're like, oh, can you? I'm standing there. I'm like, can I can I record? I, she was like, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She's pregnant. Now, thank God I wasn't on camera because my face, I, I don't know, my face just gives it away, right? She has four children, no husband. They're all living in a one room shack, right? What the community did was the community center built another room. Put the corrugate, which is the roof, y'all, if y'all don't know, put the corrugate on and now they have two rooms because they were doing everything in one room, mm -hmm. bathroom, cooking, sleeping, right? But the question I had in my mind, and I didn't say this to her, but I was like, sister, why are you still having children? Mm. I don't know if I'm wrong for saying this, but my whole thing is they like, oh, Tay-Tay, why you don't have any children? Well, first of all, I didn't have a husband, right? I want to to break some of these damn generational curses, right? For me, that's just me. And it just didn't happen. And I'm okay with that because in this horrible world, I'm kind of happy I don't have any children. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this whole world is horrible. I'm so nervous about my future, a child. I'm like, oh God, you know, but I did not understand that. So with that being said, I only bless children and the disabled, disabled. Mm -hmm. right? The elderly, you see them struggling. I'll give them a little five, 10, 20 delasi. I'm not giving people hundred delasi dick or 200, right? I give them small bills because they can take these small bills and, and stretch them. They stretch the hell out of that money. But you have to be mindful of who you, who you give money to. Don't give money to some guy was running. He's <laughs> coming from Burkama. He's running beside the car, right? Mm -hmm. Running beside the car. Uh, sister, if you see this, this is chop chop. They want to eat, right? Eat. I'm like, bro, you go to your compound to eat. I'm going to your compound to eat. Get the hell out of here. But he, oh, the, I'm like, why are you not working? Oh, because you are running beside my car, which shows that it's nothing, it, there isn't anything wrong with you. So just be mindful of who you give money to. Don't give, mm -hmm. tell these young men when they ask, because they're going to ask you, you say, uh uh. I don't give money to grown men. That is not the order of Allah. If you always bring it back to Allah, this is what you're going to get. Right? Because mm -hmm. they have been taught that I cannot argue with the Quran. I will ask them, what does the Quran say? They're not going to argue with you then because you're speaking from what their beliefs, their, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me go into, um, there's another question. Um, I want to ask you, let me ask you this. Cause I know I was supposed to do this with the introduction. Let me ask you this for those coming in, please remember to click the like button, maybe share this, sub consider subscribing to my channel and Miss L's channel. Um, and we are talking about sex baby in Africa. <laughs> Okay, so this is for the grown and sexy. I consider every all of you all sexy. You look in the mirror, consider yourself sexy too. Don't let no one else tell you anything different. 
So, Miss L, what does this, I know all the town hall meetings, the discussions that we talk about, we always try to bring it back to safety, right? Mm -hmm. What do, what does this town hall meeting mean to you? What do mm -hmm. you want the viewers to see, take home, marinate on? Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking me that question. Um, what does this town hall, hall meeting mean to me? So the thing is, I had to remember why I did my first town hall. My first town hall had to do with um, asking people if they would donate to assist Anja Africa with her return to the States so she can get proper care. Up until then, I had never done a live and really didn't think that it was necessary for me to do so. And when I mean a live, did I do other lives? No, that was, you will see, that was my first live. I had to do a whole test and get on StreamYard and, and I still mess up when I go on to um, Zoom, but that was my first live. When I started to hear the rhetoric in the background about why she was in the hospital or why other people were unalived in the Gambia, I realized that there had to be a platform so that we could have th this discussion. This, what's been happening here is not new. We have just entered into an arena where this has already existed. And I remember being back in the States and getting on my YouTube feed um, a, 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 a broadcast about SEX tourism here in the Gambia. I yes. know they have Tinder. They have oh, Tinder. Okay. Yep. So this has been going on. And then I was I had Googled something and they their um travel packages is sometimes centered around older European women coming to the Gambia to meet with young men. Now, this is not new. I it's used to not. hang out in Jamaica. They were doing the same thing in Jamaica, man. Okay? And it was European women looking for the big bamboo. If you are the blackest one, I'm sorry, that's what they call it, Google it. The blackest one with, with the biggest rust, the locks, walking around with the biggest spliff in you, the big, big, big. Bamboo. Wow. There you go. Wow. So this um, fixation is something that has always been there. Here's the problem. Or so, because you may be thinking, well, okay, well, I'm not European. I'm not non-melanated. The reality is that I kept saying to people when we got here, two to three years ago, when COVID hit, most of the non-melanated people left the country. Mm -hmm. The and melanated we people, yeah. We here. We didn't My even know. So I kept saying, yo, we, we the new white meat. <laughs> remember, remember that commercial about four? Yes, and I still say that. I still, I was like, I don't eat pork. Uh, uh, yes, but we yes. were the new white meat. So unfortunately, we are still viewed. We are viewed as a two bob. I mean, they call us that. Tube. Yes, they, they do. It, which is so and disrespectful. So, but so, it, it doesn't bother me because they're being truthful and so i know from the viewpoint that they view me and so because they have revealed themselves to me now i can deal with you in the truth that you have revealed so i'm right. I'm, I'm fine with it i educate but, them 
I do educate because if a child walks up to me and calls me a tuba, I'm doing this. Okay, so your skin complexion right next to mine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now I wear, I don't, I'm not out there wearing wigs, right? So this child, me and this child have the same hair. If I got my ponies, I'm like, look at your hair, look at mine. Is that right. hair not the same? Feel it, feel right. mine. Does it feel like your and 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 I know it's lack of education. Now, mm -hmm. what I found out is when they call you too bad, too bad, they're looking for candy. They're looking for minty. Because when they say that with the two bobs, the real two bobs, we know they're giving out candy all the time, right? Oh, interesting. Well, this one young man sees me often when I'm driving through my neighborhood, my neighborhood, and he goes, Rasta, give me money. I can't yeah. say you. It, it's so he damn rude because no they won't say that to a Gambian elder. They wouldn't say of that, right? Not. 